module 12 statistical hypothesis testing section 2 false positive and false negative first of all let us see what are the no error situations when the null hypothesis is true the decision of the statistical test is not to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that no statistical significance so there is no error in that case another case is that when the null hypothesis is not true decision of the statistical test is to reject the null hypothesis to conclude the statistical significance so that is true positive the first case is true negative in both the cases there is no error at all while the other two cases there are error in this contingency table if you can look at this table two way table so the, the first one is called the type 1 error or false positive what is that so you have made type 1 error when you wrongly reject the null hypothesis really there is no difference but you say that there are there is a difference and then you reject the null hypothesis so you are rejecting the null hypothesis to conclude there is a significant statistical significance but that rejection is wrong so that is what you call the type 1 error this is also known as false positive so when the null hypothesis is true decision of the statistical test is to reject the null hypothesis and to conclude the statistical significance so false positive which is very very common so amongst false negative and false positive type 1 and type 2 type 1 is extremely common because everybody want to say that there is significance but in reality there is no significance at all so false positive is also known as type 1 error is some examples will be a person who is truly HIV negative and goes for a test and the test says it is HIV positive you know that is false negative and uh, for a, an, an email for example the email is genuine email it's it's perfect email but your spam filter classify it as a spam and skips the inbox you know that is also false positive isn't it the another example would be accused is truly not guilty that could mean innocent or the person didn't commit any crime but the verdict says guilty so again that is false positive coming to the type 2 error or the false negative you have made false so it's just the opposite of the false positive so in the in the case of false negative you are saying it is negative the result is negative but that decision is wrong so when you wrongly do not reject the null hypothesis so uh, you know the null hypothesis is actually false there there is difference but you do not reject that null hypothesis to say that there are differences so that is called the false negative you know so uh, when the null hypothesis is not true so there are actually there are differences but then statistical test is not to reject the null hypothesis and say that there are no differences so that is what so usually this uh, result is always you know there is no statistical significance the obtained p-value is higher than the threshold p-value but that is just by mere chance that is called false negative you know what are some examples a truly HIV positive man or a woman goes to HIV testing and the test says it is negative HIV negative so that is called false negative truly a spam mail but spam filter classify it as a genuine email and delivers into the inbox again that is a false negative accused is truly guilty or he is actually committed the crime but the verdict says not guilty or innocent again that is false negative but in reality you will never know is it actually error or no error is it actually false positive or false negative or no error how will you know unless you do some simulation studies so this uh, uh, two-way table says everything so it is on the columns are basically what the test says or what is the decision of a statistical test while rows the two rows says the first row is null hypothesis is true but the second one is null hypothesis is false so this is truth or reality so reality what is happening while what test says that is in the column so that is what this entire uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, table summarizes so second table is about the truly HIV negative and HIV positive and two types of error type 1 and type 2 while the other one is about uh, spam filter and the court verdict just have a look at these tables so that is exactly what I ex just explained to you by the way what is p-value we explained that in the last uh, module
It is the null, if the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability that the random sampling would have led to the difference as large or larger than what is observed in your study? That is what the p-value, the, the probability value answers this question. So always the p-value definition starts with the proposition if the null hypothesis is true. Always remember that. So if a study compared two groups okay, and got a p-value of 0 0.03, what does that mean? So that means that if the two populations from which the samples come from had exactly same mean, you know, so that also means the null hypothesis is true. So the difference that what you observed in this study, you know, what is the chance of getting this much difference if it's arisen just through the, the randomness or chance alone. So as the difference is quite low, 0 0.03 means only 3 percentage, then uh, you know, then you say that, you know, the chances are not that high, you know, so of course the groups might have very different mean. That is what you conclude because it is lesser than our threshold p-value of 0 0.05. So random sampling from the identical population would lead to a difference smaller than you observed in 97 percentage of the experiments and larger than what you observed in 3 percentage of the experiment. That is another way to interpret the same p-value. So what is the issue of this p-value? There are several issues. One is that it's not very reproducible. You know, that's a, actually that's a very serious matter. If you get the one p-value and if you redo the same experiment, the p-value obtained is not matching with what you got it. So then uh, there is not much uh, meaningful conclusion you can infer from it. So it's confusing because the null hypothesis is almost always false. So many people say then why all this uh, roundabout if the null hypothesis is false then why do you have to do this experiment but that is a formal practice in uh, experimental sciences. Logic works backwards the population to the sample. So it's basically logical deduction akin to the probability. It's not inductive logic but it's deductive logic. So it's counterintuitive. It's our argument by contradiction. So it is might be very familiar with people who are working in a, a jurisdiction as well as formal logic and mathematical logic, but not very intuitive for rest of us. For example, the biologists, uh, we are not that very, uh, uh, perhaps the sole exception is that if you are a taxonomist, uh, you might know about this contradiction, the argument by the contradiction. Apart from that, most of the biologists are unaware of it. Now coming to the test, there are two kinds of tests. One is called two-tail test while the other one is just one tail. So the two-tail test is that statistical hypothesis testing, uh, you know, uh, that will test whether the mean is significantly greater or less than the x. x is a value that you specify. So if it falls in the top 2.5 percentile, or the bottom 2.5 percentile then it is considered to be the significant because that is the same thing the two sigma rule that I have explained earlier and I'm going to explain that more in depth in next modules. So for example if a student gets 2 percentile while the other get 99th percentile both are significant. If you draw it in a histogram or a probability density distribution these values falls in the tail, both the tail. So two tail test is that it's basically greater than or lesser than, you know, both sides matters in the two tail test. So usually the two tail null hypothesis has equal to symbol. For example, means of the two groups are equal, that is a null hypothesis, while alternative hypothesis is means of the two groups are not equal or mean one is not equal to mean two. That means that mean one could be higher than mean two or mean two should be could be higher than mean one. So either way out. So it could be both ways. So that is called the two tail test. Coming to one tail. So one tail test will test whether the mean is significantly greater than x if it falls in the top 2.5 or the mean is significantly less than 2.5 percentile, I mean uh, if it falls in 2.5, so it is basically uh, lesser than the x, the value that you specify. Never both. So that is the difference between one tail and two tails. So it is, it will just look at that, the probability histogram, whether is it actually on the top or it below, bottom, you know, the, the left or right most 2.5 uh, percentage of the whole area. So that is what the one tail test is. So usually one tail null hypothesis has greater than 
or less than symbol for example the temperature is greater than 37 degrees Celsius to call it as a fever of course so less than 37 anything is not I mean it's healthy right so that kind of thing is called one tail test so normal hu uh, human body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius so for testing for the fever the temperature has to be greater than 37 you know so it is not like equal to 37 or not equal to 37 that doesn't make any sense it has to be either more than 37 or not more than 37 so in that case it is one tail test that we use it so one tail p value are used when the predictions are made before the experiment is done about the directionality so in which direction the experiment is going on if you are very sure then only you go with the one tail uh, p value otherwise always stick with the two tail because there are a lot of a uh, lot of times the scientists make lots of errors by going with the one tail and later they recognize that we made a big uh, you know decision a mistake in the decision to go with one tail because the predicted directionality is totally wrong so if the null hypothesis were true what is the chance that the random sampling would lead to 40 percentage or more reduction in the infection rate in those treated with uh, antibiotics than the placebo if that is kind of questions that you have yes then that is the one tail p-value so other examples will be fever profit or the question like does your antibiotic impair the kidney function measured by the increased serum creatinine levels so null hypothesis would be the drug does not increase the serum creatinine while the alternative hypothesis would be the drug does increase serum creatinine so it's does it increase or does it not increase so that is the only two questions here so in that case it is one tail p-value that you can uh, kind of go go with but the advice says that when you are in doubt always stick with two tail p-value because two tail p-value is uh, almost twice that of the one tail p-value so it is always safe to conclude to minimize the chances of the error especially the false positive will be minimized if you always stick with the two tail p-value some reviewers as well as statisticians criticize any use of one tail p-value no matter how well the justification is so that is also a hotly contested topic in statistics uh, you know should we ban the whole use of the one tail because it has been uh, a lot of uh, criticisms of, you know being surfaced against it now a related error is called type 3 error or type s error so when the direction of the effect goes opposite to the direction of the prediction especially prone if you use one tail p-value so one uh, excellent example is anti-arrhythmia trial uh, you know that uh, anti-arrhythmia drugs like atenanol is used to treat the uh, you know atrial and ventricular fibrillation uh, for the heart patients you see so this uh, very famous trial is called cardiac arrhythmia suppression trial or cast so the, the hypothesis is that anti-arrhythmia drugs would either prolong the life of those patients who are taking it or it will have no effect at all then they did this uh, statistical hypothesis testing and then they got a very high p-value so that means that is there is no effect isn't it so they concluded that no effect non-significant but actually what happened is that those people you know who are given the drugs were four times more likely to die uh, you know than the placebo so it is a very serious mistake that they committed all because they, they were unsure about the directionality so there is a fact but it's not the direction that they predicted beforehand so it is not a good way to go with the one tail test if you are unsure of the direction so in summary type 1 error is committed when the null hypothesis is true decision of the statistical test is to reject the null hypothesis and to conclude that the statistical significance you know so it is rejecting the true null hypothesis this is also called false positive so type 1 error is false positive while type 2 error is false negative so type 2 error is committed when the null hypothesis is not true but the decision of the statistical test is not to reject the null hypothesis uh, to conclude no statistical significance so that conclusion is erroneous so it is accepting a false null hypothesis this is also known as false negative 
p value is defined as e if the null hypothesis is true what is the probability of the random sampling would lead to the differences as large as or larger than what is being observed in your study usually two tail null hypothesis has equal to simple while one tail null hypothesis has greater than or less than simple in the null hypothesis so that shows about the directionality of the one tail test so when you are in doubt always stick with two tail p value one tail p values are always less than the two tail p value so investigators prefer to report the one tail p value to prove their hypothesis so that is actually a wrong practice that is being uh, taken across the sciences so i hope you enjoyed this module and let us go to the next module of the same week thank you for listening